Hi, my name is Jonathan Mark. I'm publisher of Flyby News and I live in Warwick, Massachusetts. This film is called Moss Brook and TGP, No Fracking Way. TGP is the Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company uh, that wants to build a long, high pressurized gas pipeline from the western part of, of the state of Massachusetts uh, near Pittsfield and cut through the whole width of the state and we call the Commonwealth through a lot of state forests, a lot of woodlands. They kept it away from people, uh, that's for sure, but they went through the heart of nature in this pipeline for a non-sustainable, non-renewable fuel that will be gone in so many years. And in the process of gaining this uh, fuel, they use hydraulic fracturing, which is a method of uh, penetrating the earth with a lot of toxic chemicals in a pressurized uh, way that would break up the earth to release this gas. Meanwhile, a lot of water is being harmed and uh, there is known to be earthquakes that came out of Oklahoma from fractur fracturing uh, the earth and also um, it's noted that there's been a lot of um, droughts connected with uh, hydraulic fracturing that they're contributing to it. Uh, this is such a bad technology at the end of the fossil fuel age we think it's time to stop these new infrastructure for non-renewable energy and make a commitment to the clean energy sources that we really have today and that's ready to go that would end up doing a lot more good with a lot a lot more good for employment and the environment and our common wealth the communities you live in have a right to determine your future when it comes to these toxic and dangerous fossil fuel drilling and transport systems. In just the past month, 11 Massachusetts communities from Ashby to Lenox, from Warwick to Worthington, have passed resolutions in many cases by wide margins banning the TGP pipeline and strengthening community rights. No longer do we believe the energy companies when they say we have an energy crisis. No longer do we believe them when they say that solar and wind are not viable. And no longer will we tolerate being lied to when we know the truth. Solar technologies and energy efficient programs are viable and they can and will provide the energy we need. We have with us tonight some of our representatives from around Massachusetts. I'm pleased to introduce to you now Denise Andrews. Wonderful, outspoken representative on this issue, Denise Sanders. It's always good to be back in Greenfield. You all are the heart of progressive movements, and it's really important to remember that as we go forward. I want to check how many, raise your hand if the pipeline is proposed to come through your town. How many? Okay, and how many? 
Raise your hand if it isn't going through your town, but you're a kindred spirit to ensure it doesn't come here. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take half of the folks directly impacted and the other half of the population to stand with them and care and make a difference. Yeah. So I want to be real direct where I am, and I think many of you have seen this. This, hit, this raised its head about two months ago only. Only two months ago. And, and I want to thank... Pardon? In the volume, I can yell louder. <laughs> Not a problem. Hold it close. Whoa, there we go. So this came up about two months ago, right? And in two months, look what we've done. Okay, people have mobilized across Massachusetts, have linked with resources outside the state, and are going to figure out how we have better energy policy and better solutions for our communities in this generation and in our next generation. Said, where do you stand, Andrews? And some of you know me. I was not for biomass large scale. I was there to close Vermont Yankee. I'll be there to clean it up with you. And I'm going to be there to stop this pipeline where it's proposed. <laughs> it's going to take all of us, all contributing. The media is doing a really good job, Richie Davis, on covering the stories and getting the word out. Thank you. Activists stepping up, dividing and conquering, and the landowners getting educated, and people showing up at their select board meetings to let their government know what they want in their communities. That's good for democracy, it's good for the community, and that's what gets built in our communities, is what you want. That's how it's supposed to be, and the only way we're going to not have this come through is that we are crystal clear with our, with our decision makers it isn't going to happen, okay? And it, I look at these inflection points as a way to evolve our communities, ourselves, and our democracy. And so as we go through this, I'd love having Annie in the group who have for generations taught us how to use every energy to sing, protest, ask questions, get arrested, and claim communities. So generational learning, and we've got a little one running around here, we need to keep it going. These are our communities. We get to decide what we have and don't. In business, it's a privilege, a privilege, not a right, to That's come right. in and build things that are in the better interest of the community, not in the better interest of profit. Yeah. 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 So when I, when I look at some positions, you know, you've engaged in our mobilizing. I was at the meeting in Warwick. Who's from Warwick here today? Thank you. I've got four towns in my district, Warwick is one of them. They had a two and a half hour meeting well run by the moderator, Don. The questions were thorough, precise, and broad. They asked everything from wall thickness on the pipes, the size, how many compressor units, what's going to happen to the environment, what about landowner rights, covered the gamut. I think if the other side was paying attention, they saw the intellectual capacity and strength of character that we are so proud of in this area. All right. Good evening, everyone. This is welcome to the Montague Select Board meeting for Monday, April 7th, 2014. Meetings being taped. Cell phones to ignore, please. Kinder Morgan Incorporated. Votes may be taken. Gas pipeline discussion. Is Mr. Four here? You're Mr. Four. Um, would you like to just do your presentation and take questions after? If that works, sure. It works for us. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Hi, my name is Alan Four uh, with Kinder Morgan, uh, which is the parent company of Tennessee Gas Pipeline. And what we wanted to do tonight was to give you a very preliminary overview of a project that we are considering uh, for Massachusetts and New England for the purpose of addressing an energy crisis that the governors of the states uh, and the state's energy providers have identified. You're here tonight for permission to do your survey work on town lands. Okay. And you should concentrate on that. Okay. Okay. Uh, if I'm going to limit conversation, and I have to because we're only given this an hour. Okay. If I'm going to limit conversation on this to just what you're here for tonight, if you go off on all the other things, that puts us in a very difficult position. Okay. All right. 
Well, I, I want to be. That, that said, you yeah, can I say know, anything you want. That's a, that's a tough one because mm -hmm. I, I don't want I want to be transparent too with folks okay. and let them know Just, what we're doing and the big picture of the project too. So, okay, you you may proceed. But I understand this, your point. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, I, my my piece here will be 15 minutes or so, and then we should have plenty of time for for questions. Okay. Thank you. All right, so a little bit about uh, Kinder Morgan. Uh, we are one of the, the largest energy companies in North America. We have about uh, 12,000 employees throughout the United States. Uh, we recently purchased a uh, Tennessee gas pipeline a system that's been in the area for many years. Uh, and this is our network now uh, as it exists today. Uh, we're the largest transporter of natural gas in the country. Uh, and we have around 70,000 miles of natural gas pipeline. And that's what all of these different colors represent, are natural gas systems across the United States. And the one we're talking about today is the expansion of the Tennessee gas system. Uh, we've all heard a lot about shale plays uh, across the country. And this gives you a good idea of where the energy is coming from in the United States. And a lot of that currently is from the Marcellus Shale, relatively newly accessible shale. So the Tennessee gas pipeline system, um, it is 13,000 roughly miles of pipeline transporting gas throughout the region and certainly into the northeast. You can see the Marcellus Shale here in the Utica Shale regions. And that's uh, the presentation and I'll turn it back over to the board for uh, however you want to handle it. Thank you. <clears throat> the board is only here tonight to decide whether or not to grant access for survey work to town property in the town of Montague. That said, they came for an open meeting and a full discussion of this project. Uh, I guess in that case, I'll open it up for questions. Um, my name's Jonathan Marker, I'm from Warwick. Um, but it relates to, it, as the big picture shows, you're going through a lot of wetlands and the most precious lands in Massachusetts the whole northern section of Massachusetts has loads on my land, and I received a call, but um, I told them I didn't want the survey. And then I saw the map, <clears throat> and it's going through my, my land, um, and there's a brook on it, and it goes across to the wetlands. I just, if you want to be public relations to choose this section of Massachusetts for a pipeline, can you guarantee that it'll never leak? Can you guarantee that there won't be a tree falling on it in an accident? Uh, I mean, this is like more precious to me than the gas that you're providing to these companies, as well as it adding to more of the global warming issue, uh, and doesn't resolve that. So, uh, why don't you keep it where the pipes are already, and, and rather than going through virgin forests? And to me, the virgin. Okay. Well, you asked several questions there. Let me try to, to address them. Um, uh, one, you one came about the leakage. Yeah, the leakage. I can't stand here and say nothing's ever going to happen to a pipeline. Uh, Anybody that says that nothing would happen to a road or any type of infrastructure would be lying to you. But what we can say, and what the U.S. Department of Transportation said, is the safest way to transport large volumes of energy. It's buried underground, a minimum of three feet, uh, three feet by federal standards. This isn't the Alaska pipeline that's above ground. It's it's a buried pipeline, and all of the all of the things that you mentioned, the the wetlands, the protected areas, the sensitive areas, the scenic areas. All of this is going to be regulated on how we do this. We propose methods of construction. The state and the federal agencies, and to some extent the local folks, local agencies, tell us how we're going to do it. It's not how we want to do it, it's how they tell us we're going to do it. So you know, they, Greg Pellerin, 42 Turner's Falls Road. A question, what, what are the ramifications if the town or the other uh, landowners do not allow you to do the surveys? Well, uh, ramifications, what do you mean? How do you keep moving forward if you can't go look at the properties? What, do you have the ability to, to, to go to others and force your ability yes. to go look at this property? Yes. Sure. Yes. I'd be happy to. Our goal is to work with the landowner and get onto the property. And as you said, to keep the process moving as a last resort, we would petition the Massachusetts Department of Public Utility and ask them if we could gain access to the property. Private property. For survey permission. And yes. then the permits. The no, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with that whatsoever. Okay. There's a chapter that's um, in the Commonwealth 
that um, we can petition, um, which again is the last resort. We don't want to do that. We would much rather come and meet and visit with you and talk to you about the project. But if if that happens, um, then we if we weren't able to get onto the property, then um, we'd have no other alternative but to petition the Department of Public Utilities. Enforce the issue. Again, still wanting to work with you, but but yes, we would go through the state. Come all you good people. The news to you I tell. They want to lay a pipeline and we say go to hell. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Oh, which side are you on? They send Franklin County, there are no neutrals here. You're either for the planet or a fracking racketeer. Yeah, which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Oh, which side are you on? Well, oh, people, can you stand it? Tell me if you can. They're here for the profit and we're for the land, yeah. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Oh, which side are you on? We're tired of excuses. We're tired of their lies. We good folks ain't got a chance unless we organize. Yeah, which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Oh, which side are you on? It's all about the money with Kinder Morgan, Tennessee. Was Barack Obama side with this industry? Yeah, which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Oh, which side are you on? Come all you good people, the news to you I'll tell They want to lay a pipeline And we say go to hell, yeah Which side are you on? 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 Thank you all! So why are they doing this? And uh, why are they pushing for fracked gas? And the only answer that I've received was to make the price of energy cheaper. And then there's this um, other part where, since there's uh, uh, geopolitical battles with resources with Ukraine right now going on, the U.S. would love to liquefy it, this uh, gas, and send it overseas and export it so they can screw with the Russia's supplies. Because I think Russia is telling Ukraine now, if you want to um, have this illegal government, which was created by a coup d'etat, even though this, they happen all the time, and they're all probably illegal, um, <clears throat> he was going only will require uh, for Ukraine to receive their gas uh, supplies uh, to be paid in the euro or another uh, um, currency rather than the dollar, which um, could bring down our petrodollar, really. And... So there's a lot of negotiations going on right now because Russia and the U.S. have been allies for so long in this type of uh, empire pursuit for uh, destroying the environment for uh, greed and power and wealth. And, and, you know, when will they transform into an environmental direction? Uh, I, I hope it's not too late, but if they go through this land with their, uh, the gas pipeline, they're going to lose my incentive for investing in this land, for putting up solar, for um, you know, feeling like I'm here to protect the uh, land and the soil, and so it's under a great threat right now. Hello, my name is Windwalker, and I've been uh, in this area since the 1970s. Uh, my dad had 26 acres here, so he allowed each of his sons, and there were five of us, to uh, wander around and, and find a spot that we wanted to build our camp. So I went out there into the woods and came to this uh, giant boulder. And it seems that 
All of the other boulders in this area were quarried. He was the last of his of his relatives there. Every chance I get, I go out there and I'm with him, and I could really feel the union. And when I'm not there, and now this fracking pipeline is coming in, it may go so close that you can be sitting with the cola and look out and see the pipelines, or worse yet, even smell it. And so that, boy, when I heard that, I, I thought he was pulling my leg. I said, how can people be that cruel and that misunderstanding about the Earth Mother? How can they harm nature for money and profit? That doesn't make sense. It seems like a cheap science fiction movie. And yet, that's where we all seem to be living now, in that cheap science fiction movie. Well, there's going to be some changes coming up. Nature doesn't like all these things being done to her. She's going to do what she needs to do to keep herself alive before she's to totally destroyed. With all these greedy people. They want the gold, they want the silver, they want the oil. They wanted all the trees. It amazes me that people can be like that. So uncaring, so cold, so heartless. So I'm just a hoping and a praying, along with my brother Tacola, that it doesn't happen. We've come to lease your land to drill for natural gas. It's called hydraulic fracturing, and it is the very pass to a bright and cleaner future above the Marcellus Stone. Plus, we'll give you lots of money and a new mobile phone. I said you are a crook. I don't believe the things you tell. Get off of my land and then go straight to hell. No fracking way, no fracking way, no fracking way. I don't trust corporate salesmen, whatever they may say. No fracking way, no fracking way, no fracking way. My neighbor was out of work, things were looking grim. So when the fracking guy came round, he had better luck with him. The company said, don't worry, everything will be just fine. So sign your name right here, sir, on this dotted line. Pretty soon the water was tasting rather dire. One day I lit a match and the water caught on fire. I thought about a lawsuit, then stumbled on the fact that fracking got exempted from the Safe Drinking Water Act. No fracking way, no fracking way, no fracking way. Is this how democracy works in the USA? No fracking way, no fracking way, no fracking way. Maybe I should take the money, move off to live somewhere. But all the places that I look at, they're fracking there. They've backed us up into a corner. In the places we hold dear, we've got to stop their drilling everywhere. And I'm doing my part here. No fracking way. No fracking way. All you frackers can frack off both tomorrow and today. No fracking way. No fracking way. No fracking way. Last chance. No fracking way, no fracking way, all you frackers can frack off both tomorrow and today. No fracking way, no fracking way, no fracking way.
gas investment green Parmar drinking water. Okay. Let's see. Don't let gas investment green Parmar drinking water. Yes. Don't let gas investment green Parmar drinking water. Don't let gas investment green Parmar drinking water. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. And here's the trail that goes from Connecticut to Mount Monadnock. And this is the top of Mount Crag in Northfield. There's Mount Grace. Behind Mount Grace is Mount Monadnock. And this is east where the frac gas pipeline is headed towards the eastern part of the state to Lowell. And they'll be going through such state forests as this. And, and we'll go on the other side of the mountain. We're, we're headed facing south this way. But um, we'll get to the west side of this Mount Crag, which is a beautiful place for a sunset. Okay, let's go. This attack on water by fracking at the source and then during the transport has to end. The Keystone Pipeline has to end. We can't keep taking dirty fuels and blowing it up into the atmosphere. The military industrial complex must relinquish hold and make a full commitment like it did during the Manhattan Project, but this time for renewable, sustainable technologies that can maintain a livable world. Thank you very much for sharing this video with me.